Okay, next groups. We have like 25 minutes. But yeah. Okay. Um, so, hi, um, uh, I'm Raymond Naj. My partner is Livia. We are from KTH. And uh, our project um, was essentially a bit of an investigation into the reproducibility of some of the claims in a recent paper that is called Zero Initialization, Initializing Neural Networks with Only Zeros and Ones. Um, uh, and uh, this paper uh, essentially proposes a deterministic initialization sch scheme for neural networks um, uh, that uh, also has some other beneficial properties on top of being deterministic. And uh, it was shown to outperform the default initialization schemes that are used in PyTorch and TensorFlow um, uh, on uh, some data sets and some other textures. And uh, I was interested in this paper because uh, I like to reduce the randomness of my uh, training runs. And also um, uh, the paper claims that uh, if you use this scheme, um, uh, then your model essentially um, uh, learns lower dimensional representations uh, by default, which is also a good property. Um, uh, so for this reason, um, uh, we wanted to check if what they say is really true, um, uh, but we didn't uh, check the second claim we only checked whether it can be used as a drop-in replacement for the default, initial, the default initialization. Um, uh, we had three experiments, um, uh, each with a different data set and a different architecture. Um, the first one was uh, that we trained a ResNet 18 on Cypher 10. So ResNet mm -hmm. is a classical deep learning architecture and Cypher 10 is typically used for image classification. It has 10 classes, it's really simple. Um, uh, and then the second experiment was uh, training a transformer on Wikitex2. So uh, in here, the task, the, the task was essentially just an exploit prediction. Uh, and in the final uh, experiment, we trained uh, a, an architecture known as a denoising diffusion model. And uh, this is typically used for uh, as a generative model. So we learned how to create images uh, from noise. And uh, First, I'm just going to introduce the method in the paper uh, that we implemented, and then uh, we will talk about the experiments. Um, uh, so um, some background, um, uh, as you most of you probably know, um, um, usually when we initialize neural networks, um, uh, we tend to use small numbers for each of the weights, small independent numbers. Um, the two most common initialization techniques are Xavier initialization, which, uh, you, which samples the weights from a uniform distribution, um, uh, depending on the size of the layer that we consider. And uh, another common technique is uh, the chiming or he initialization, which samples from a normal distribution, sampling around zero, with some uh, predefined variance, also depending on the size of the layers. And uh, of course, when you, um, uh, when you have like a new architecture or a new problem, um, this might or might not work. And setting the variance of these initialization techniques is uh, commonly a problem. Um, uh, so um, uh, if we have something like a deterministic initialization, then we can get rid of that. Um, uh, this is just some additional justification for why this is an interesting problem, but we won't have time to go through it. Um, uh, but uh, in order to define this technique, um, uh, some uh, linear algebra first. Um, uh, the partial identical matrix I uh, of uh, n and n dimensions is uh, essentially just an identity matrix and some zero padding on one end if one of the dimensions is longer. So if, uh, um, uh, if you have an n by m matrix and uh, n is smaller than m, uh, then it's going to be an uh, identity matrix um, uh, for the first n by n block, and then some zeros on the longer end. Uh, and if they are the same, then it's just an identity matrix. So it always has this block structure, right? If we don't allow different subsets of indices to be ones and zeros. No, okay. yes, exactly. This is uh, just uh, a so definition. Extended. Yeah. And then the other definition you need is the Hadamard matrix from uh, linear algebra also. Um, uh, and this is uh, a recursive definition of a square matrix. 
um, uh, where we start by having a one on the top left. And as we increase the size of the matrix to the desired size, we always take the previous block and uh, take the that value three times and then uh, take the negative and put it to the lower right corner. So that's why you have one, 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 minus one. And then we take that two by two matrix and then we do the same. So that matrix again, three times, and then we take the negative of uh, each one in the, and uh, so this is going to be a square matrix um, where the length and the height of the matrix is uh, a power of two. And then, uh, and then uh, the technique that we consider here uh, for initialization is defined through these two types of matrices. Um, uh, so um, uh, what they do is that when you have a layer, uh, say like a linear layer in feed forward network, um, uh, if it increases the dimensionality of the representation, so if the output dimension is smaller, uh, higher than the input dimension, um, uh, then they take the Hadamard matrix of a certain size that is big enough, and they use the partial initialization matrices to essentially project the Hadamard matrix to the desired size. So that's why we needed this partial initialization thing, and they normalize it so that they are not actually ones and zeros, but it's scaled by something so that the weights are a bit smaller. And uh, that's it. Um, and, uh, Olivia is going to talk about the first day experiment. Yeah, so, um, so the first experiment was about training a ResNet on support 10. So as mentioned before, it has, so far, it has 10 classes and it's relatively small images, and the task is image classification, and so it's supposed to be relatively simple. And ResNet is a type of neural network. Um, it's called an um, CNN, so convolution, so a neural network based on uh, convolutional layers. Um, and so it has convolutional layers, which means that um, when it comes to say the image and first step, it will um, apply a convolution operator on it and uh, basically reduce or in some cases increase the dimensionality of it in order to extract features. And ResNet is um, a special type of CNN uh, in the sense that it has um, residual blocks. So uh, repeating blocks of um, CNNs, um, <laughs> convolutional layers and linear layers with uh, additional state connections to like enforce the input more and more um, in short. So um, yeah, we use Torch Vision and ResNet 18 is one of the smaller versions of ResNet. And um, so there's a out of the box implementation for it, but um, what was sort of hard for us to, uh, was to figure out uh, what the problem was because initially we had a problem with it and we then realized um, that um, so the way they implemented it was adapted to uh, ImageNet, which is a much bigger data set with a thousand classes. So it has like um, an additional layer in the beginning and an additional like um, dimensional reduction max pooling layer. So we needed to um, get rid of that and like decrease the size of the um, initial pal layer. And um, yeah, so here we basically redefined the first layer and um, got rid of the max pooling layer by replacing it with an identity layer um, mapping. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. This was our implementation of um, zero initialization for um, convolutional layers. So, in a sense. Oh, yeah, um, one thing I forgot to mention is that when, what something we found interesting in the paper is that when they defined uh, this uh, technique for linear layers, then it was quite straightforward. You just initialize that matrix. Um, but when you have a convolutional layer, um, then you usually have a number of filters inside it by Torch data. And uh, they only initialize one of them with this method, and all the other filters are going to be zeros. Um, so that's why we have like a special function that only takes um, uh, it's in the bottom the end 
um, filter the N is, uh, I think, just the middle one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yes. Um, yeah, uh, here we um, initialized um, basically all the comp layers and linear layers um, according to uh, what's needed. So in our experiment, we compared um, zero in it with uh, Kaiming and Xavier. And um, so PyTorch's basic implementation of um, how the weights are initialized is uh, Kaiming um, uniform, I think, which is like a slightly different uh, because it's a like clip version of um, Kaiming normal. So we needed to like enforce it manually. Um, same goes for Xavier and as for zero, we initialized weights with um, zeros. And, and then we are going to like overwrite them. And OK. Yeah, this is left click. Left click. OK, yeah. Um, bash number is not really important, but these are the default parameters for that. Um, so when it comes to zero in it, we um, iterate through all the modules in order to find all the comp layers. And if it's not the last comp layer in each residual block, then we are going to initialize, like, apply this function on it. Um, they mentioned in the paper that the last convolutional layer in each um, residual block is not going to be initialized with zero in it because it's like um, um, normalization the issue with like error propagation or something. So it needed to be normalized this way. Um, and then um, we um, use PyTorch Lightning to make the training scripts easier to like, in order to get rid of the boilerplate code and um, also used Torch Vision's like um, data set classes um, for the data set wrappers themselves. Yeah. So here we can see that, um, yeah. yeah. For those of you who are not familiar with Python tracking, what this means is that we essentially just need to define a data module class that defines how we handle and load the data. And uh, we, um, like if we are buying transformation, transformations and so on, we need to define a model uh, class that defines like uh, the training steps logic, what they do in a single training step and a single validation step and so on. And then uh, PyTorch Lightning provides a trainer class that handles um, uh, how you um, distribute the data and the model of the GPUs if you're doing that, how you integrate to different like, uh, training pipelines. Um, so that's how you use it. Yeah, uh, it can be seen here that there are, yeah, these are the training step and validation step functions. Um, and they have like a rigid structure here. And we log the validation loss and validation accuracy being used. Um, Negative block likelihood loss here. Or just the cross of it. Yeah. Um, so um, this experiment was more or less pretty specific in the paper. So um, it was, um, um, so every hyperparameter that was relevant was mentioned. And whenever there was a hyperparameter that was not mentioned, they referred to the original like ResNet um, parameters. So um, we have the opportunity to actually look on the other paper and try to infer what they used, which is nice. So they use like an SUD as an optimizer. And there was a um, warm up in the beginning. So basically, learning rate increased up to a certain point. Um, yeah. And so here we have the training script. Um, which is wrapped in a function. And there, um, so there's a trainer class that takes care of the training loops and reads and basically everything that we discussed above. And we, of course, um, block the experiments and stuff. So, so the here's strategy the or what is just like oral? Uh, yes. So uh, it's integrated into um, PyTorch Lightning. So it takes care of it. It's basically, you just um, um, conducts distrib distributed learning on by dividing up the data set, like sharing that between multiple workers. And but here, yeah, we hard coded a value of one year, but otherwise it should be scalable. But um, yeah, and then we 
validate and test um, the validation and test sets respectively. Is it the one we was uh, chiming again? That's the one where you do the uniform I but scale? Or? I, I think the timing was the normal distribution oh. was the variance and the dependent size of the game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is the function um, that basically um, prepares the data set and then runs the aforementioned function. Yeah, it's just, it's like a yeah. And you and, can see that we use five random things here. In the paper, they use 10, but we didn't want to hold the resources, so we just use five. Yes, for all three settings. And but yeah, we can't really run the tensor box, box, but um, here we can see the results. Um, so for we got the highest values, the highest accuracies for um, zero, and then the next rest was uh, Xavier and then Kaimi. And in the paper, they had these results and they reported error rates and not accuracy rates, but um, we could see that they. Um, so the method that they proposed um, turned out to be the best according to them. And then it was Kanye that was second best. But um, in our case, we could see that Kanye was like um, substantially worse than the other two. And that was our conclusion here. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like how are you? Yeah. Yeah. So the second experiment um, was about training a a simplified like a small transformer on. On the wiki task too. And in order to conduct um, that token prediction, so for each token, which is basically like um, a discrete unit um, of the text, we would predict, we would make the model try to learn um, what the most likely next token is, basically. Um, it's pretty standard setup. And um, one of the like most common metrics to render the uh, performance of the model is perplexity, which is basically like um, as the loss. But um, it's essentially the likelihood. So how likely is this text according to your model? Yeah. So these are recorded on the test set. Um, and something interesting here maybe in in that table, if you scroll up a bit, is that. Uh, According to the paper, um, uh, when you use the standard initialization for transformers on this data set, um, if you increase the number of layers by too much, then uh, the training is going to diverge. So the model is going to break down, it's going to have a really bad performance. Um, but if you use that initialization, then it's going to be stable and it's going to keep improving even if you increase the size of the network in this case. So this is a, this was another reason why we're interested in this. So we download the, the data set first. And um, so for this data set, there was a fixed split. So we could, which is good, we could use the same data setup basically as what's usually used. Um, and here's our definition of partial identity matrix again, and then um, zeroing it, but now on linear layers and not comp layers, but it's the same thing. Um, so what's interesting here is that they mentioned that, um, so they use a simplified version of a, of the transformer architecture, which was found in, um, um, high purchase, um, examples repository. And then, uh, they stated that for, um, so they initialize the linear layers with zero in it, but when it comes to the attention mechanism in the transformer, so like specific types of weights, um, they initialize the so-called queries with um, as unit matrices and the so-called keys and values with 
null matrices. Um, Could you kind of remind me quickly, what is the attention uh, mechanism of transforming? What's the, it's a bit like a learned look at table, so you create the input and you have like three linear layers, mm -hmm. you can transform it and then you take that and uh, you transform like sequence the different implementation and then it's just the uh, scale. Okay. okay. Yeah, so these are weights um, used for courses model to learn the relationship okay. between the different tokens, yeah. like which correlate the most and things like this. Um, so yeah, so here we initialize um, multi-habit tension and here are linear layers. And so um, we um, reuse the code that was from the repository, but we needed to make slight modifications so that the zero in it would work with that. Um, so. And multi head attention is like possibly more than one pattern for this. For yes. Pattern. Yes. Sounds so, yeah. like a Hindu goddess or something. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that um, the queries, keys, and values are defined here. And other types of like projection layers at the end of it. It's yeah, this is just kind of like changing. Yeah. It's not a functionality. You just add to them instead of value because they yeah. have it. But and this then, is still PyTorch Lightning. Uh, no, so this yeah. is having the PyTorch libraries implementation, mm -hmm. and we had to change like a few lines so we could have it. Yeah. Transformer encoder decoder, which is a wrapper for um multi hatter tension and then added like linear layers and dropouts and so on. And um, the data set was handled in your own way. So it's just buying like a separate dictionary class to create your quotas basically um, for the splits. Yeah, so for this one, this is a PyTorch repository to be used and then we put PyTorch typing on top of it. Yes. Yeah, so here's our definition of the PyTorch Lightning wrapping class, basically. Um, to your positional encoding, um, modify transformer and creator layer, embedding slender layers, and so on. So, um, and all the standard. So, uh, the wrapper class for the Wikidata module. Um, and the training script, just basically the same as ResNet script. And so here, yeah, we initialized the number of layers, first for two, six, and 10, and then for eight, really wrong, for eight and 20. Um, and we used for that for this one as well. And they didn't say anything about the number of runs, so um, it was, yeah, it was assumed that they ran each of these setups only once, so they didn't provide like a, an average and a standard deviation as in the previous experiment. So we did the same, basically. Um, and as we can see that, um, so these are the results for our experiments, and like ours diverged pretty early on compared to what they reported. So yeah, something you can see here is that, can you scroll up a bit? This? Mm -hmm. Um, that our numbers are quite different, um, but that's because in the paper they barely provide any details um, for how the network is trained. So what we did is that we took that repository and we changed the learning rate so that it was something reasonable. Okay. So what we expect, it seems like that much worse results than us, we expect that they just took the default learning rate and went with that and they got some results in the paper. And while for us, we get completely different results. And of course, both of these results are just from single round. So for well, this experiment, we conclude that maybe more investigation is needed to back up the claims of the paper, and personally, we really wouldn't switch to zero. Um, uh, so we said it. Yes. And then um, we don't have so much time left, um, but there's another experiment that I can speak to. Oh, by the way, a really quick comment. I saw you created a, a, a title 
you know, you know, if you go to a cell and use the GUI and create a title in the database, you can throw yes. an untitled. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah there was an this. accident. So okay. we didn't yeah, have to do those. It. It once it's deleted it once. Yeah, because yeah, then we could it. actually ignore it. So, but also remember, all your notebooks will also be archived, right? The yes. BBC file is also someone else can. Okay, um, so the last experiment was uh, also on uh, Cypher 10, um, the same as the first data set, but instead of classifying the images, we just want to generate them. Um, uh, so we took this uh, diffusion model on potential because I worked with them and I was interested in if, if the method works for this one because they didn't have an experiment when I'm generating models. Um, the, for this one, um, there's a library in Hugging Face, uh, which is normal for NLP, but recently they released the so-called diffusers library and now they can do all sorts of generative tasks. Uh, so we use that um, uh, and uh, define the uh, standard uh, denoising diffusion model for this task. And uh, essentially just train it with horror than zero initialization um, to see what kind of results we would get. So one of the quick, um, yeah, mm -hmm. pros of using um, diffusion models is that it contains both like Linear layers, convolutional layers, and um, attachment mechanism. So we could apply like the previously defined functions. Um, yeah. Um, but since it's like a new experiment, we need to sort of figure out how to exactly do it. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, so this one is quite powerful in general, um, uh, but uh, it takes a long time to train. So we didn't finish training. Um, uh, we only trained for like. I think two hours in the end um, for each of the models. Um, uh, and uh, so um, I think these samples are did you remove the other image? Um uh, yes, um uh, so it might be a bit difficult to see, um, but what we found is that when we inspected the lost curves. Um, we saw that zero initialization is consistent with us at the beginning, more significantly so than at the end. Um, uh, and uh, in this case, at, in the left, you see samples from the model um, with the default initialization. On the right, you see them with zero initialization. And uh, one property of diffusion models is that if you fix the random seed, then you will get similar images in for different models. And uh, what we found is that uh, if we use uh, zero initialization, then uh, the images are a bit less detailed and uh, they're less saturated. Uh, for example, if you uh, compare this image to that image, I assume this might be a fish or something, um, uh, then usually like there's a bit less color on uh, the images on the right and uh, also sometimes uh, less contrast between the foreground and the background. A lot of times the background is just this white color, so the model is uh, was both in terms of the loss and also in visual quality. And we, we've seen the same at the end, but uh, here it's much harder to notice. I actually have to uh, run through the two images through like an image diff and uh, see where they differ and then inspect it one by one and they saw similar things. So um, uh, yeah, uh, in conclusion, we found that the matter Sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. It's hard to say. I wouldn't switch to it. <laughs> yeah, let's thank the community. Does anyone have any questions? There's probably no intuition why it works, works for diffusion models. Well, why? Do you mean like why the images differ? Why well, it's less expressive, right? It's less detailed. I think um, we saw for the transformers that uh, the, the default method seemed to work better. So I think it, it's a general problem of, uh, of the proposed technique. That is not so good. I mean, I kind of do like the, 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 the idea of just having all these zeros at once, right? It somehow carries this combinatorial geometric primitives if there are really any, right? So in that sense, it's mathematically dubious. Yes. 
but uh, let's maybe move on to the next group. Of course, we can continue the discussion with Pika. Oh, it's a lot of work, guys. I mean, a lot of coding. So I'm going to really enjoy learning from your notebook later. I've never used lightning 